We're here with Emory head track and field coach John Curtin as the Eagles coming off of the 2015 UA Championships, a win for the men, third place finish for the women. Coach, let's start with the men. Obviously, just an incredible weekend for the guys. First UA Championship in the outdoor season since 2004. You know, take us through kind of the emotions the day after the event. Yeah, we're, we're still trying to pull ourselves together a little bit after the weekend. It was a great great time for all of our kids. An amazing performance by our guys. Uh, I think the only people that believed they could do it was them going in. Uh, on paper, it, it sure didn't look like a win for us, but uh, after digging a pretty deep hole, I think we were about 26 points down after day one, uh, we really came alive day two and came up with uh, eight event victories. Uh, seven of them came on the second day and uh, the kids really rose to the occasion. There was kind of a, uh, a building uh, rush of excitement throughout the day, and with each victory, uh, we get, felt a little bit stronger, got things rolling, and uh, were able to pull out the win. You know, so many incredible performances for the guys to talk about. Um, you know, let's start with this one. Grant Murphy, 1500 meter run, sets the conference record. Maybe not quite out of the blue, but you know, did you did you expect a performance like that out of Grant coming into this meet? Well, Grant was was really prepared for a good 1500. Uh, we were going to put all of our eggs in that basket with him and have him go for it in the 1500. He was scheduled to come back in a 5K with whatever he had left, but uh, Grant's uh, an emotional runner. Uh, he he really wanted to do well for his team. He got in the mix early, ran very smart for the first 800 meters and got himself in position with about 300 to go and then cut it loose. And It was a great, great victory to watch. I'm happy for him and I'm happy for Coach Harden and the distance crew. How about James Basson in the javelin throw? Again, another Terrific performance, conference record setting mark for him and something that's probably four years in the making. Exactly, you hit it on the head. There's a kid who came in and you know started from square one and he has just done nothing but develop work and improve. Uh, you know, as, as great as his javelin effort was, you know, a school record and, and a likely national qualifier, um, his discus performance was huge coming up on the end of day two when uh, the meet was still very much in question. So James was amazing for us, also scoring in the hammer. You know, kind of on the other end of the experience spectrum, you had a couple of freshmen in the sprint events that did pretty well. Daniel Peach, uh, conference record in the 400. Philip Greenfield, terrific in the uh, shorter sprints, including winning the 100. Uh, that group is kind of youth taking over. Uh, Phil Greenfield just blew us away, uh, what, 1081 and 100. I don't know where that came from, but I'm glad it came. Uh, just a first class kid uh, came through for us in a big time. Peach is a gamer. Uh, that kid just loves to win. And uh, you know, I'll never bet against him when they're coming down the finish straight. He'll, he always finds a way to get there and a, and a conference record to boot. So. That's a, a great start, uh, possibly a, a national uh, spot will come with that conference record performance. You know, uh, one other guy to talk about, and again, so many great performances, but uh, kind of the, to a certain extent, maybe the forgotten man of the team, but Adam Rabushka comes out, wins the 400 hurdles, wins the 100 hurdles. He's won both before, but he's never won both in the same meet. And, you know, on the conference level, probably no greater achievement for someone than to get those two events in the same meet. Well, particularly with Adam coming off of an injury, uh, you know, he hasn't been able to perform for the last, uh, last two meets at, at the level that he's normally able to. Actually, we, we held him out at Western Carolina. So uh, to see Adam uh, really take his captainship uh, and, and put it out there on the track and, and back it up with performance was very inspiring to everybody on the team. Uh, we knew he was without a doubt the best 400 meter hurdler out there, but for him to win the highs in a very competitive race uh, was big for us at a, at a very important juncture in the meet. Yep. And let's switch over to the women real quick. Uh, start with this. Hannah Smith, uh, unbelievable performance in the 3,000-meter steeplechase. 
1057.50. She's made some strides, some incredible strides in this last year. I think that's over 20 seconds off her career best time entering the year and a 10 second improvement. Uh, talk about the jump she's made in that event this season. Hannah's just uh, really resurrected her career this year, going into her senior year. She just uh, has decided if she's going to do this, she's going to do it right, and she's going to do it 100%. And she has really uh, taken the challenge mentally. Uh, there is nobody, I think, in a country who's a better hurdler in a steeplechase than Hannah. An amazing hurdler, makes up a great deal in each of the barriers. Uh, but her mental tenacity, she got behind in that race, uh, but managed to keep contact, came back with a great last 600 meters and got under 11 minutes, which is a big deal for steeplechasers. And, and her uh, 1057, that may hold up for nationals. She may have to run a little bit faster, but um, we're happy for her. She's come a long way. And again, similar to the men going from the senior to the freshman, Caitlin Cheeseboro claims the conference championship in the 100-meter hurdles. Uh, not an easy event to win at the UAAs ever, and she was able to come up with a victory in her first career UAA Outdoor Championships. Caitlin Cheeseboro is just the picture of cool when she's out there on the track. Uh, one of the great things about Caitlin and what's important aspect that you need to have as a straightaway hurdler is the ability to block out and the ability to focus on what's going on in your lane and I've never known anybody who focuses on her technique and her lane and not worry about what's going on around her and Caitlin she ran her race she ran hard um, the Washu girl hit hurdle eight I think gave her a little bit of daylight and she cashed it in so yeah it's fun to see a freshman cash in on an opportunity like that because she's just a great kid. We love her to death. You know, Coach, the home stretch of the season coming up here now, the focus kind of shifts from the UAAs to the NCAAs. Talk a little bit about that process going forward over the next month leading up to the NCAA championship. Well, I'll tell you, Johnny, we got uh, we got a whole bunch more kids in the van going to nationals <laughs> right now after this weekend. Uh, there are a whole lot of kids that still, still have hopes for a national birth. Uh, a lot of kids that are probably as good as in right now, uh, but we still have a bunch like uh, Julie Williamson and, and Hannah may have to run a little bit faster in the steeple. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got some quarter milers that have a chance. We could get our men's 4x400 four together, I think, and, and pull off a, a national performance. So we've got a lot of possibilities. Um, I know uh, Katie Wilson and Scott Greathouse are going to continue to high jump. Uh, they're making strides toward national direction too. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll fill up the bus and, and take a good group to nationals. We'll kind of see it all unfold over the next three weeks. Coach, thanks again and uh, congrats again on a great meet. Thank you, John. Thank you for all.